and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. In the News is brought to you by the T1D Exchange. T1D Exchange is a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving outcomes for the entire T1D population. Our top story this week, the copay cap on insulin may come back before the U.S. Senate in a few weeks. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he will bring it back up after Republicans blocked it in that sweeping climate, inflation, and health care package passed by the Senate on Monday. Speaking on MSNBC's Rachel Maddow show, Schumer said, quote, we're going to come back and make them vote on that again. Seven Republicans voted with all 50 Democrats, three short of the 60 votes needed. It is possible more Republicans would support it if this came up as a standalone measure. Some have said they would. But it's not clear if this again would be a copay cap for those with insurance or if it would be a cap on the actual price of insulin for all, including the uninsured. Dexcom is pushing back the timeline for a U.S. launch of the G7. That's after the FDA raised questions about the device's software during a review. This has something to do with how the G7 and its smartphone apps deliver alarms to users. Looks like maybe a limited release in the fourth quarter of this year, full rollout in 2023 if there aren't any other hiccups. As you likely know, the G7 is nearly 60% smaller than the G6. Its transmitter and sensor are all in one, and it has a much shorter warm-up period. It's been approved in Europe since March. One type of once-a-week basal insulin gets the go-ahead to move forward with clinical trials in the U.S. Gan and Lee Pharmaceuticals says its investigational drug called GZR4 is more stable with less day-to-day variation than once-a-day basal insulin. There are a few of these weekly insulins in trials. We've talked about this before, none yet approved. Gan and Li is also doing trials of the drug in China, where they are already a big player in the insulin market. Good news for Sensonics, makers of the Eversense implantable CGM. Shares were up on second quarter earnings and future expectations. I don't generally report on stock market moves for diabetes companies, but the past few years have been a bit iffy for Sensionics, and there was some speculation on whether the CGM option might continue to be available in the U.S. They partnered with Essentia Diabetes Care and got the six-month approval for Eversense earlier this year. A new call for comments to the FDA, but the deadline is today, August 15th at midnight Eastern Time. I'm going to read directly from a post by Joanne Milo in the CGM in the Cloud off-topic group. Joanne's been a guest of the show. She leads the Loop and Learn group, and she writes, quote, We have until August 15th, 2022 to provide comments on FDA changes to the way CGM display and alarm systems are regulated. This has implications for remote monitoring and automated insulin delivery systems, both commercial and DIY. We request your assistance in helping the FDA and device providers understand the benefits of real-time CGM access and the risks we carry by not having ubiquitous real-time access to our diabetes device data. We hope you will choose to spend a moment to add your voice to the We Are Not Waiting chorus. They provide some text, which I will link up in the show notes. You can use them to help you write your comments, as well as the links to the CGM in the Cloud post and the FDA comment portal. More news in just a moment, but first I want to tell you about our sponsor, the T1D Exchange, and their registry is a research study conducted online. It's over time designed to foster innovation and improve the lives of people with T1D. This platform is open to both adults and kids with type 1 living in the U.S. Your personal information remains confidential. Participation is fully voluntary. But once you sign up, you can complete annual surveys and have the chance to sign up for other studies on specific topics related to T1D. The registry aims to improve knowledge of type 1, accelerate the discovery and development of new treatments and technology, and generate evidence to support policy or insurance changes that help the T1D community. For more information or to register, go to t1dregistry.org slash Stacey. That's t1dregistry.org slash S-T-A-C-E-Y. Beyond Type 1 announces that it will once again field a team for the New York City Marathon. Beyond Type 1 will be among the 500 official charity partners. The team includes nearly 50 runners across the U.S., Canada, Ecuador, and Australia. I was excited to see that Kyle Banks, who's been on the show before, he's a Broadway performer. He was in the touring company of The Lion King. 
He's the team captain, and this will be the first marathon that he'll run. Since 2017, about 150 people with type 1 diabetes have run the New York City Marathon with Beyond Type 1. We'll be talking more about this leading up to the marathon in early November. And finally, congratulations to Morgan Bednarczyk. She is the author of the brand new book, T1D Looks Like Us, A Type 1 Diabetes Story. This is a children's book, and the synopsis says Rose was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when she was seven years old. Now she is nine, and at times she feels lonely because she doesn't know any other kids with T1D. With help from her mom, Rose meets people from all over the world who also live with T1D and have their own unique stories to share. It's available on Amazon. I will link it up. I know Morgan through the Friends for Life conference and also through Macy's Believers. And this is a really cool event. I will link this up as well. I am going to be the MC at the Macy's Believers Gala. This is Saturday, November 12th. It's in Port St. Lucie, Florida. This is a group that supports uh, wonderful diabetes causes, including the Friends for Life conference. So you'll be hearing more about that as we get closer as well. But I was really excited that they invited me. And uh, it's one of the last things that I did in 2019 before the pandemic. So I'm, I'm excited that they're having it again. All right, next week on the podcast, I am talking to the folks at Patients for Affordable Drugs about the bill that passed the Senate this week. As we said, the insulin copay cap was removed. But what was left in and what does that mean for medication prices, especially for people on Medicare? We will talk all about that. The episode out right now is our special 50th episode, where I am interviewed by news anchor Christina Frank, who hosts the morning show at WMTW in Maine, and she lives with type 1. You can listen wherever you get your podcasts, and that's in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.